Coming to you live from Radio Canaan Studio. For the record. For the record. For the record. Here, Here from, from your, your government, government officials, officials, independents, and the opposition on issues that matter to you. For the record. Engage in an open dialogue between residents and lawmakers. For the record. For the record. For the record. Informative, impartial, insightful. This is your talk show. 1 800 534 8255. Your calls, your input. This is For the Record. And now, your host, Arit Connor. Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to For the Record. Today is Monday, the fifth day of February 2018. I trust everyone had a great weekend. We had some rain over the weekend as well. Again, uh, uh, welcome rainfall for us. I would imagine that uh, come the spring and then, of course, into the summer, we're going to have lots of fruits, lots of fresh fruit, and they're going to be really what, what the old people would say. They're going to be nice and fit. We get so much rain. I'm sure that the mangoes are going to be big. The avocados, we know them as pears, are going to be big as well. So that rain is welcomed. Trust everyone had a great weekend, enjoyed their weekend as well. Those of you who are football fans, and it's funny that everyone becomes a football fan when it's time for the Super Bowl. Everyone becomes a basketball fan when it's time for the um, NBA championships. Everyone becomes a soccer or a British football fan when it comes to the World Cup. <laughs> we just seem to follow all of those sports. So I'm sure that in all of the offices, all by the water coolers and in the kitchens, people are talking about the Super Bowl last night as well. Uh, of course, won by the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles were flying uh, there were a lot of people who were rooting for the Eagles because they just simply, some people like an underdog. They, they love to root for an underdog. And the, the, the Patriots were so favored. Um, everyone expected them to win. I was corresponding with people and uh, saying to them, um, I, New England is going to win. They're just so good. They're so consistent. And there's nothing like being good and also being lucky as well. That combination really, you know, helps a lot. So lots of people will be talking about the Super Bowl uh, today as well. I want to thank you, our listening and viewing audience, for allowing Radio Cayman and, by extension, for the record, into your homes, into your vehicles, as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands into your places of work, whether it be an office cubicle or if you're working in the outdoors. I want to remind you that For the Record is a show produced by the staff and the management of Radio Cayman, and it is geared towards keeping you abreast of issues as they play out on the local, regional, and international scene. I am your host, Dorit Connor, and you're welcome to join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 7.30 a.m. until 9.30 a.m. Our phone lines are always open, and there is always someone there waiting to take your calls. Normally, it is, as I usually say, that beautiful radio voice of Miss Susan Watson. You can call us on our toll-free number, provided courtesy of Flow. That toll-free number is 1-800-534-8255. You can also call us on 949-8037 and 949-6990. Of course, if you don't like to talk on the telephone, email us at for the record. That is one word, for the record, at C-A-N-D-W dot K-Y. In addition to that, we have a WhatsApp number. That number is 925-3261. You can send us a text or leave us a voice note. If you leave a voice note, then that will be played uh, over the air as well. So I'll, I will repeat that WhatsApp number, 925-3261. Do not expect anyone to answer that number. We want you to send us a text or leave us a voice mail. Today, being Monday, it is Government's Day and it is our pleasure to have in the studio with us. It is my pleasure to have in the studio with us uh, this morning, Emily and Councillor, Ms. Barbara Connolly. And of course, she represents Georgetown South in our Legislative Assembly. Uh, Ms. Connolly is a Councillor in the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports, Agriculture, and Lands. And she has specific focus on um, 
education and sports. So that is her focus. We also have in the studio with us MLA, Mr. David White. He represents Georgetown West in our Legislative Assembly. And he's a counselor in the Ministry of District Administration, Tourism, and Transport. So without any further ado, I want to say good morning to both of you MLAs and counselors, and welcome to For the Record. Thank you, O.C., or should I call you Mr. Yeah, you, Connor? Yeah, oh, O.C. is fine. O.C. is fine. Okay, thank you. Good morning to you, and also good morning to the listening public. It's very good to be here today, and, and I look forward to sharing some of my experiences in the last eight months of my being an MLA for the just District of Georgetown and on the whole for a representative of the Cayman Islands. Mr. White, good morning, sir. Welcome to For the Record. Morning, OC, and morning to the listening public. Yes, you are correct. A lot of people were watching Super Bowl, and our sister and her husband, Jerry, always do a Super Bowl party, so that's where we were last night. And I think a lot of people were rooting for the Philadelphia Eagles because they just wanted a different winner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... They always say America likes a wonder dog, uh, underdog. They always yes. say that. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, we're going to start out by, first of all, saying I think uh, it's about, what, eight months since uh, you were uh, elected. Um, you're both uh, freshman uh, legislators, but I believe that by now you have gotten more than just uh, your feet wet uh, during, during that period. Um, tell our listening and viewing audience... Um, what it is like the, 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 uh, going through the whole campaign process, the night of the election, the, the tensions uh, that are there, and then your first um, meeting in the Legislative Assembly. Thank you, Osi. <clears throat> I'm just going to give you a little joke first. <laughs> Our, um, a lady posted on my Facebook page recently, she said, Girl, she said, you never stop. She said, you are cl cleaning yards in Windsor Park. You are taking kids to the farms in Frank Sound. You are cleaning the beaches of Safe Haven. And you're serving food to our seniors. You are an MLA that's on the ball. And I can honestly say that for the last, in the last eight months, I have been a very busy lady, and you know, See I'm on just Facebook not, all the time. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not one to just <clears throat> stay home or, or lie down and play dead. I, I'm here to represent the people, and whatever I have to do to carry out um, that purpose, I will. And I, I'm really, I really have enjoyed what I have done in the last past, uh, the last eight months. And I will continue to to serve my people in that regard. Now, I've also been told that I need to chill a little bit because I'm really doing too much. And I, I just want the public to know that this is not a lady that will chill. She will get things done and whatever it takes. And I know that people think that I'm, I, I'm a bit of a... Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what's the word now? They keep, that I keep bugging them and following up and okay, following up. Yes, yes. But where I'm coming from, I just want to get things done. Yeah, I don't you're like very bureaucracy. You're very I don't persistent. like um, just that whole no sense of urgency. Mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. I have to do something, I want to get, get it, it done. done. And yes. that's just how this MLA, MLA will carry through for the next three and a half years. Uh -huh. And this is almost like a continuation also as your role when you were um, a political analyst and uh, in, in the uh, premier's office as well. You did a lot of uh, work uh, similar to what, you, uh, what you're doing now to a certain extent, isn't it? Exactly, precisely. Yes, when I worked for the Honorable Kurt Tibbetts, um, he, I was his political assistant and I did all the constituency work for mm -hmm, his, all mm -hmm. of his constituency work. And so it really wasn't um, anything new to me and also working in the government in the departments and stuff so I had th those connections already from back in the day when I worked with him so it was it was pretty easy to get in there and to start 
working okay. for Mr. people. Mr. White, tell us about your experience. And we know that you're always politically active, but probably, uh, uh, you know, on the other end, you know? <laughs> well, I'm following Barbara, and I can't relax because Barbara has me everywhere. But as you know, as you said, we, Christopher and I, have been involved with politics through the beginning with Mr. Norman Bodden, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who's one of our political idols, with Mr. Linford Pearson. That's when we really started to get involved. And it was more as a supporter, the doctor, Mr. Linford Pearson. He's another political idol. And then more recently from 2002, we have been Kurt Tibbetts' um, coattail, as if you want to say it like that, because <laughs> he has trained us and taken us under his wing, and that's why we were heavily involved in politics. But I got to tell you the honest truth: I, in the last eight months, is more involved, and you're learning so much than I have ever done from the time because we were outside, like voicing our opinion mm -hmm. and supporting people. But to be actually inside. And I have to say that it has been, it is easy. It is real. I mean, the time is consuming, but with the people that we are, I like I'm on the, um, the Honorable Moses Kirkconnell in his ministry. The people that he has is incredible. And then I'm on the, I'm sports counselor for the Honorable Juliana Connolly. Mm -hmm. And the people that she has just makes it easy. I, I just flow, you know, with what, they, what they're doing. And I've learned so much in, in presentations that I've been to for the Ministry of Tourism for sports. I've learned so much more in the last eight months and than I had done before because I'm heavily, more heavily involved than I was previously. Mm -hmm. And and the, the work that you do, obviously it relieves the, the, the minister quite a bit to, to, to focus, you know, more on, on, on other issues. Um, how much uh, do you feel that you assist the ministry or the minister and takes a lot of the responsibility off their shoulders in terms of having to be at so many places at one time? Well, from, from the get-go, um, I've actually attended from back in June last year. You know, that was June was graduation month. Mm -hmm. So I attended a lot of the graduations, be it the primary schools or the high schools, participated when the minister wasn't able to do so and um, during the the last eight months um, any um, of the functions that she wasn't able to attend I would always step in to speak on her behalf uh, and on behalf of the ministry so that's one of the I guess the purposes of being a counselor is being there to assist the minister when she's not able to attend these functions. Okay. When, when uh, we're going to take a break in about another two minutes, and when we come back, we're going to focus more on the subjects in the, in the ministry. But I want to talk a, a little bit more about your exposure. Um, both of you are, are young, and um, the use of technology. We see you on Facebook all, all of the time. In this day and age, it certainly has made life much easier. Technology, social media has made the life of a politician much easier um, because it gives you a way of communicating with not only your constituency, but also uh, the, the wider public you know, as well. And, and we see lots of that. Tell us about uh, your use of um, social media. Well, basically, Facebook is my... <laughs> My thing. <laughs> I'm not too much into um, Twitter and um, and what's Instagram? the other? Instagram. Instagram. Yes. I mean, I have an Instagram face, uh, mm -hmm. page, but I'm I'm not. I tend. I I just don't have enough time mm -hmm. to to be able to service all of those. Yes, so yes. I I tend to focus more on Facebook. So all of the stuff that I do on a regular basis, as I get home at night, maybe late, but I go on to Facebook and say I've done this today. I've attended this. I've spent time with the students doing, you know, careers day or careers week or so it's it's my um my Facebook page is really the area that I focus on and you know what it's 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 brilliant because you don't have to individually mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. go and advise either my constituents or th the wider um sector um as to what I am doing. It's one click 
you you um, download some photos and there you go and what I like about it too is what uh, when people respond to you they reply to you because that gives us a lot of encouragement mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to continue on mm -hmm. because when I saw that lady the other day that posted that on me I'm like yes <laughs> I'm, I'm, I will continue this you know uh -huh. I'm not doing this for any sort of um, thanks or praise that's not Barbara I, I do it for my people and my country and for love of this, the Cayman Islands. Okay. Folks, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, the conversation will continue with MLA, Miss Barbara Connolly, and uh, Mr. David White. So please stay tuned. For the record, we'll be back shortly. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. In the studio with me this morning, we have MLAs and counselors, Ms. Barbara Connolly and Mr. David White. Uh, Ms. Susan, uh, I have a, a message. Someone is saying that they tried to call in on the 1-800 number, but it was giving them some problems. Maybe uh, maybe from their end, they said it was uh, giving them some problems. Uh, uh, so for that person who's trying to call in on the 1-800 number try our whatsapp number well you know the whatsapp number because you've sent me a, um, a whatsapp uh message in that regard so try our, our um whatsapp number in a regular number nine four nine eight uh six nine nine zero or nine four nine eight zero three seven uh try either one of those um as well i'm going to throw the mic over now to mr white and uh we're going to talk uh, about some of the things that are happening or have happened in his um, the ministry that he has uh, been working with, Mr. White. Okay, thank you. Oh, see, before I get into that, I would just like to send out two birthday greetings. Sure, sure. The first one is the lady that's very, very close to us, especially Christopher and I, but to our family. That is Charlie Ebanks, Rhonda Connolly. Debbie Ebanks, Mother Miss Edith. Yes, yes. I'd like to say right. happy yes. birthday. Love you. And then also, a uh, next birthday I would like to say is happy birthday, OC. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I was trying to hide that. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, OC. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And then also mentioning about the Facebook that Barbara was talking mm -hmm, about. Mm -hmm. We, I originally got into Facebook just before the elections in 2009, and that was to mo promote the PPM and to tell you the honest truth that has really come back to help me in you know last year's elections because that put out a lot of what I wanted to do and so on so mm. even though I was doing it for the PPM in 2009 it came back and helped me and I put on things that I am truly proud to be part of and especially like the last few weeks has been a lot of the high school and primary school sports days and I attend that, and I'm honored to represent the uh, the the minister, the Honorable Juliana Connolly. So I'm I'm happy to put that onto Facebook and expose that. But um, yeah, I'm I'm in the Ministry of Tourism and Transport under the Honorable Mose Connell, and then I'm also the Councillor for Sports under the Honorable Juliana Connolly, and. I'm really, really enjoying everything I'm doing. I'm learning from it. And I mean, we, we go out, we are asked to go places to represent them. And I mean, it's our honor and our pleasure and we're just enjoying it. And as we're doing it, to be honest, we're learning. Okay, excellent. Um, you want to talk a little bit about, well, recently, we, we had our Heroes, uh, National Heroes Day, and the focus there w was sports. on sports. Uh, many awards, uh, you know, were given. I always say, and I said then, and I continue to say now, that we're playing catch up. Some people will criticize in a way to say, you know, you're handing out too many awards, and that sort of like dilutes the value of it. And I don't think that any recipient of any award believes that. The, the award that they have received has been diluted in any way. But we're playing catch up. We have so many people and we have not 
really focused on recognizing people while they're alive. We've always done that when, you know, when we were, you know, in the church and the casket is in front of us and when we're at the grave site. And sometimes people like to hear things. They want to hear it, uh, you know, while, while, while they're alive. So we had National Heroes Day. That, there was a lot of planning that went into, in, into that as well. Let's talk a little bit about that, if you, if you may. And I agree with you, O.C., and to be honest, if we had been doing a Heroes Day from years and years ago, we wouldn't have so many awards being handed out at one time mm -hmm. for each focus, you know, each discipline. But sports was this year, and from years back, we've had so many great sports, men and ladies, that we have to recognize them. And if it takes up a lot of awards on the day, we have to do it. Because even though we were awarding the past, and even people who have passed on, they are deserving of it. And then also, we were recognizing future stars. And I mean, that's the way our future, I mean, sports for the future, we have to encourage them to keep in the sports and that the way to do it is recognize future sports stars. So I don't think it's diluting by giving out so many awards. In years to come, when we're doing it, it won't be as many because then we've, we would have been through all the awards for the past and it will be less to give out but i think it was a great day i enjoyed it and especially being a part of government i re i truly enjoyed it mm -hmm. And of course, that was a day that uh, there are many faces out there that you haven't seen in a long time that you, you, you really, you know, get to uh, sit and chat or stand and chat for a few seconds with them and renew old acquaintances as well. Because as small as these islands are, you know, uh, that you can go literally years before you see some of your, your old friends. Yeah, but every year we have National Heroes Day. We go out there and we see people that we haven't seen for years. And that was the same as this year and next year i think the premier he, he um, announced maritime mm -hmm. right That's correct. yes and uh -huh. we next year you're going to see a lot of deserving awardees for maritime and you will also as you say see a lot of faces that you haven't seen in so many years so it's something that we sh as caymanians we should be proud of <laughs> Uh, I'm going to stick uh, with you, uh, Mr. White, for, for a few more uh, minutes before we go t to the news. Um, let's, let's talk about tourism a little bit. Uh, lots of things have been happening in tourism. There is still, we still have the whole uh, cruise ship issue. Um, right now we have our um, Owen Roberts International Airport, the refurbishing, the expansion of Owen Ro Roberts International Airport. Um, challenges, um, but things are, seem to be going uh, pretty well. We know the experiences that we have when we travel abroad. You go to Miami International Airport, there's always expansion going on on there. You go to almost any U.S. Um, airport and you see, see the same things happening as well. I, I think a few weekends ago there may have been some challenges with um, uh, passengers. I'm not sure what, what occurred uh, this weekend. Uh, I'm not. I'm sure that you probably had the opportunity to tour the facility and everything. Tell us a little bit about it, about the facility. Yes, yeah, so Um There was a couple Saturdays ago. There was a issue, and it couldn't be the airport and tourism couldn't be under a better minister than the Honorable Moses Kakonal. And when when this issue came up, the first thing he did was call for a meeting and mm -hmm. bring in the important people who could uh, make a change and everything went smooth well as smoothly as possible this weekend i mean he was he jumped on it straight away that you know i mean he wasn't happy but we all know that to have expansion there will be problems and to, we don't want to close down the airport completely mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you have to work around it and they open a little area close the area to work on and that's how it's going and as smoothly as possible, I think we're doing a really good job. And when this airport is finished, every Caymanian will be proud. I can tell you that. I've, we've been, they've taken us on tours of what will be. We've seen the diagrams. And I know that every Caymanian, I, was, I used to be coming through the old airport, the real, the first airport. And to see the new airport, we were extremely proud of that. And now when this new airport is completed, Every Caymanian, I can guarantee you, will be proud.
Okay, Miss Barbara, let's touch on education. I think we have a, a couple of minutes that we can we can sort of like um, tease our audience uh, into what we will be talking about when we return after the uh, eight o'clock news. So let's talk a little bit about education. Thank you, Osi. And happy birthday. I knew it Thanks. was sometime in February, and I usually have it noted on my <laughs> calendar, but for some reason, I, it didn't um, stick today, so I, try, I apologize. I try to hide it these days, but uh, I, I know some of my friends out there, especially uh, the one that Mr. White uh, you know, mentioned that shares a birthday with me, so I... I <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Rizalda, thank you. <laughs> yes, we have to celebrate every birthday. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. Yes. you know, you just never know that it will be here for the next. So mm-hmm. it's good to do. Okay, moving on to, as I'm the counselor for education, and I would have liked to um, share some of uh, what's going on in the ministry with my minister being present. But I'm sure she'll come on at a later date, and I'll, I will come on with her. But just to give you a little insight into what the ministry is doing, they've developed the Education Plan of Action in 2017 and 18. And this plan provides strategic focus, measures success points, and helps to avoid initiative overload. Mm -hmm. It also provides an opportunity to build coherence with various parts of the education system to ensure that they work in sync with one another to achieve strategic goals and priorities. And so I'm not going to flash out a lot of this, but mm-hmm. I'll just give you some what's some highlights. Um, the continua- continuation of the John Gray High School construction project. We're at stage two, which is the outline business um, case, mm-hmm. the OBC. And a contract with KPMG was signed in October 2017 to undertake um, this business case. Um, regarding additional education posts, um, for teachers, a number of new education posts have been added in the 2018 budget. These posts include additional special education needs specialists, and that's an area that we need a lot of attention mm-hmm, in. Mm-hmm. Teaching support staff, leadership positions, reception teachers, primary teachers, high school teachers, and STEM, S-T-E-M, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics wow. coaches. And that's another area that we have to focus on because that's our TVET program. Folks, I want to remind you that you're listening to For the Record. I'm your host, Dorit Connor. My two guests in the studio with me this morning, MLAs and counselors, Ms. Barbara Connolly and Mr. David White. We're going to our 8 o'clock news. Don't change that dial. Lots of important news is going to come your way. And then after the 8 o'clock news, we will continue the conversation with our two guests. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me. Uh, this morning we have MLA and counselor, Miss Barbara Connolly. She's with the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports, and Agriculture and Lands. And her special focus, she focuses and concentrates on education and youth. I believe I may have erroneously uh, when introducing her, said that uh, her focus was education and sports, but it is actually education and youth. And I also have in the studio uh, with me this morning MLA and counselor, Mr. David White, who represents Georgetown West in our Legislative Assembly. He's a counselor in the Ministry of District Administration, Tourism, and Transport, and his focus is on sports and tourism. So I think I got that right now, did I? Transport. And transport as well, yes, sir, Uh, as well, sorry. So we want to welcome them. We have uh, one or two voice notes as well, and uh, one voice note, and Ms. Susan is going to play that voice note over the air uh, at the moment. So please listen into that. Good morning, Uncle Osi. This is Melanie Moore. I just wanted to say happy, happy birthday from the cold Canada right now. Um, You are doing such a great job. I try my best to listen to your show in the morning before I go to school and have to make that long trek in the snow. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for all of your support over the years. Um, It has definitely meant a lot to me. And I'll definitely do my best to study hard and make you and my fellow Caymanians very proud while I complete my last degree in veterinary medicine. 
So thank you so much for everything, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Mel. That brought a little bit of uh, wet stuff to my <laughs> <laughs> to my eyes on that. Yes, uh, Mel is in uh, Ontario, Canada, and she's uh, attending veterinary school there. As a matter of fact, her dad, all of you know him as Haha. Alan Moore just returned uh, yesterday evening from there. I think there was an event over there that um, at the university, and uh, it involved families and stuff. So he went over to spend time, uh, you know, with his daughter there. I know he was a little bit challenged with the cold, and uh, you know, he was able to spend some time over there with uh, you know his other uh, uh, children as well. And I spoke to him yesterday evening. Said he had a great time. Um, you know, he, one of his uh, nephews uh, took him uh, around up there as well and uh, it, it was great for him so I want to thank Mel for that and I must say that uh, she, Mel at first attended uh, university in Scotland uh, she seems to choose all of these cold climbs to go in but uh, she first attended university over in Scotland and now she's in, uh, in Ontario Canada and uh, she has a great future um, really really um, uh, uh, good daughter um she really is focused has her uh those old people would say has her head on her shoulders has a level head and doing doing really well and i'm sure that uh both of you as mlas and counselors have um come across many young caymanians like that who are um you know seeking to excel and i know that you do all that you can to uh encourage them in whatever it is that they're doing as well because there are so so many opportunities here for our, our, our caymanians sometimes they just need to embrace those opportunities there are other times when we have to knock down barriers to to ensure that they get those opportunities um as well i don't know if either one of you want to comment on that I would like to say that it's not only Haha -ha, who we've grown up as a brother. He, it's not only Haha -ha and Lorna that is proud of Melanie. Mm -hmm. We, as all Caymanians, are proud of her. And I know, because Haha -ha speaks to us all the time, and mm -hmm. I know he's extremely proud of her. And we, as Caymanians, are all proud of Melanie. Okay, Miss Barb. And I agree. Um, I'm also happy that. Another one of our young Caymanians are studying to be a veterinarian, and we have to encourage more of our students to diversify into other areas apart from accounting and lawyers. We need more them to, they need to have other options, mm -hmm. other career options in mind. As a matter of fact, I attended the John Gray High School. Um, they had a careers week last week. And I cr attended the careers fair on last Friday. Mm -hmm. And it was, the whole week was um, included guest speakers, mock interviews, and it concluded with the careers fair on the Friday. Over 40 employers from various sectors and government agencies um, participated throughout that week. And the main purpose of career week is to, um, to introduce students to a number of career options provide them with the, opportunity, with the opportunity to interact directly with employers from a range of businesses and provide networking opportunities. Mm -hmm. And as I visited the booths and conversed with the employers and interacted with the students, I was so impressed with the amount of um, career options that those students have. And it was actually focused on um, year nine and 11 students. And I have to admit that I was very impressed. So these students really do have so many other opportunities, career opportunities that they need to take advantage of. But they do need that direction and that guidance from the schools, encouragement from their parents um, to pursue um, these various um, options, mm -hmm. career options. Okay, I think we have one caller. Let's take the caller. Good morning, caller. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, I'm Osi. Good morning. And good morning to your to your to your panel. Um, good morning. Get, good, good morning. Yeah, I get I get to you first, Osi, and don't cut me off because I'm not calling on behalf of any co-host or anything. So don't don't try cutting me off. Uh -huh. um, um, I've been selected by the um, Rock Hole crew. You know the, you know the crew. Yes, yes. Um, to call in and say. 
to sing you a song, sing Happy Birthday to you, but I don't want to take up all the time to singing. <laughs> we'll do that this, e- this evening, later on down there. So, so the crew wants to say Happy Birthday to you, and I must not mention anything about your age because you <laughs> are trying to keep all that down. No, not really, you know, because... I- there are mil- there are milestones in my life that I looked forward to. I looked forward to reaching 50 because I wanted to see how it felt to be 50. Then I looked forward to 60. So my next milestone now is 70. And then when I reach 80, I want to see if I'm still on a bicycle. And then when I, if I live to reach 80 and then if I live to reach 90, I want to see you know, how I still am on the bicycle at age 90. And then after that, I will say that I have accomplished everything. And if I fall off the bike after that and, <laughs> and die, I would have well, been happy. I would well, have... Well, well, if you reach 90 mm-hmm. and you're still as smart and as knowledgeable as Awawa, then you can hang out with us. <laughs> yeah, but and, and have the memory that she has. That and she has, has the, then yes. you can continue to hang out with us. Yes. Yeah. Okay, getting past you now, um, I also want to say kudos and um, congratulations to the, the counselor there, um, um, Barbara. Yes, Ms. Um, Barbara. Um, she, um, getting this from, from Mr. Bush, the, 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 the speaker, um, I think he was into a meeting in the early part after the elections, and he, in his office, he said to me, he said, boy, that Barbara, she's fire boy. She, <laughs> she's a hard worker. And so she she got things on her agenda that 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 um I don't know if she got accomplished all that um in, in four years. Mm-hmm. You see, but she she really and coming from him, right? I kind of took that in good. Mm-hmm. And as you know, OC, we always visit the farms. Yes. So we I was were, up by Herman's uh, on Saturday. Yeah, but you couldn't big we one huge pumpkin. We were going, but he sprayed, so we didn't. We we went to other farms that you don't know anything about yet. Okay. Um, okay. So we we went to one across from. Hideaway, Miss McKenna. Okay, okay. Yeah, yes. Olson Farm. Uh-huh. And it was one, well, 200 um, school children in what, in front, a piece of property in front. Of, and when we asked, I should say, oh, that's the school children across there. And I think um, Miss Barbara, the elected Emily, have something to do with it. So she was out there with all these kids in this in this farm there. I mean, at, at 12 o'clock, or I think like 11.30 in the sun, you know. And and there she were, out there, and the, these kids. So that showed me the determination and the and the energy and the um, and, dedication and and, yeah. and the interest that mm-hmm. she got in the community. You know, not just at a high level, executive level, but where she can be out in the bush mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. a bunch of kids, teaching them to farm and 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 encouraging them in the likes. That's really being down to earth. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And I think she had her own high heel shoes too, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know how women are about their high heel. You know? Okay, you know, got so, anything to say to Mr. White? Yeah, I know yeah, you and him are good yeah. friends. Oh, yeah, yeah. I get, I get, um, I get gas sometime when I don't have no money. <laughs> um, um, yeah, um, after election, he came to me and said, he used to call me um, Premier at first, now he calls me Mr. Speaker. He said, Mr. Speaker, you think I could get in to speak to, to Mr., Mr., Mr. Bush? I said, yeah, I'll start it up. So he came. And I called him. I said, come down by the alley. Came down by the alley and they went in. I, on the way on the way down, home, you know, we were driving, driving after that. Um, Max said to me, the speaker, he said, boy, that, that David, that boy, he got to do well. He asked the right questions. He got all the right ideas for the community. And he reminded me when I was working out in the community, when I first got in, he said, that boy will do well. And that coming from Mr. Bush. He also said, I got every opportunity I get, I'm going to try and send him on, on, on um, seminars and whatever. And he said that. And then, and then that coming from Mr. Bush, knowing the relationship that David and him had in the past, you know, all them licks David used to be putting in him and stuff. <laughs> you know, that coming from Mr. Bush, right? Um, concerning David on one meeting I I appreciate David even more than what I did as me and him being just good friends you know so I also want to say congratulations to him for his effort and all the work that he's putting in also as a as an MLA and that's what a representative is supposed to be like it's supposed to be for the people out there in the bush um, knowing what's happening 
um, if our if, if other MLAs would come around to our gathering too, or see, you know that because mm-hmm. we run the country right from from that little area there too. Yeah, yeah. You the know? only thing is that we don't we don't have a budget. <laughs> we just don't have the budget, you know. So um, so but you know um, that and I appreciate it to the the councilors that are on there today. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to tell him to keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Lord Graham, for that. Thank you very much. Uh, folks, please stay tuned. We're going to a commercial break. Uh, when we return, the conversation will continue with MLAs and counselors, uh, Ms. Barbara Connolly and Mr. David White. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me this morning, MLAs and counselors, Ms. Barbara Connolly and Mr. David White. I also want to point, point out Mr. Robert Powell has a birthday today and former MLA and minister, Mr. Ralston Anglin. Hey. We, sal- we celebrate uh, a few years ago. We did the rounds. We were at Wellies. We were at various, various spots, do, uh, you know, doing the rounds on our birthday as well. So I want to wish a happy birthday to uh, both of them, um, you know, as well. Um, okay, I'll also like to wish um, Miss Edith because yes. I didn't get an opportunity to earlier, mm-hmm. and Mr. Powell and Mr. Ralston. Yeah. Happy birthday to everyone. Okay. Now uh, we heard the comments um, from. Uh, Mr. Graham Rankin, in, in relation to, you know, your involvement, what you do. And I think it is important uh, for people to note that both of you were candidates in the election and you were successful candidates in the election. But I would venture to say, and you can uh, agree or disagree with me, that neither of you are politicians. You are just people's people. You love people. You 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 have an interest in families. You have an interest in your in your communities, um, so and that I, is what makes it appealing to most people because you're not there, um, you know, to wheel and deal or to um, or to say things that make people feel comfortable, make them feel happy. You're actually, and and I'm not saying that politicians don't do this as well, but you have no ulterior motive in terms of what you're doing. Well, see, first of all, I like like to let um, Graham know that I was wearing sneakers that day <laughs> and not high heels. But the first time I went to the farm, I was, in fact, wearing high heels. Okay. But I could still walk on the rocks uh-huh. and still stay in myself. And I also thank him for his kind words to both um, Councillor White and myself. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of being a, not being a politician and really being a down-to-earth kind of person, I think most people know that's who I am. I can be on someone's farm. I can do anything, whether and I don't feel like I'm above any, or it's it's menial to mm-hmm. me in any regard. So, um, that that's just who I am, and I can say the same for David. He, we are here to serve the people, and whatever it takes, I am out there with them, through it all, whether it's good, the bad, whatever situation they're in, I can honestly say I will be there for them. And in terms of the the farm that I visited last Friday, it's a, a, it's a young farmer and um, this event was organized by uh, Mr. Huell and his team. That's a John Gray um, teacher. And he took 120 um, year eight students out to this farm. And he actually, um, it was like life skills day or something. And he showed them how to start. He, we, they started from scratch. They weeded the area. And then they went, went through the various steps to planting the seedlings. What a way to show these students that farming is another career option for them. Even though in this day and age, most of them will think it is too hard a uh, a job for them and some of them complain but by and large they had a wonderful day out there and uh, we had sponsors that provided water food and um, and drinks and stuff so the, the students they were like can we come back can we come back because basically they should be back they should come back in a month's time to see really what when that fruit or uh, whatever it was planted um, is harvested so they can see the end result mm-hmm. and what their um, hard work did to produce that. 
Yeah, I would agree with Barbara because when Barbara went the first time to the farm, I went along with her. Mm -hmm. She had 120 students that went this time. I had a grand total of 16, and I can tell you what those 16 did under Josh Clark was impressive. So I can imagine 120 students out there. So I agree with what Barbara was saying about the farm. Okay. One of our listeners has written in and said, very nice to hear your special guest this morning. Yes, the airport is very impressive and something to be proud of. But I wonder when it's finished or is it in the plans to accommodate and separate domestic Cayman Brack, little Cayman travelers from international travelers departing uh, departures and arrivals. After all, domestic travelers are not subject to immigration customs, or may I say, should not be, although security checks are required. After all, Cayman, Cayman Brack and Little Cayman are within the Cayman Islands and are uh, the Cayman Islands. Those travelers have not left the jurisdiction and become confusing when inter-island departures and arrivals uh, coincide with international. I, that has always been one of the concerns, the mix of domestic and um, international passengers. Um, we have had issues with that in the past. I believe some um, nationals have actually used that as a way of getting into the into the United States, purchase two, two tickets, one for the United States, one for Cayman Brack, uh, get in and get on a flight, then it goes to the states, claim political asylum uh, when they get there. But I'm sure that uh, those are issues that the uh, Cayman Islands Civil Aviation Authority uh, would be uh, looking into uh, as well. I, I, I'm not sure I whether or not you're, uh, any of you have person, any knowledge on that. I think that person will be very happy when the, the airport is complete because mm -hmm. we went, we were taken on the tour and I know that there's plans for the, a domestic line. And trust me, Cayman Brack and Little Cayman will not be left behind with the Honorable Mose Kirkconnell in charge. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you everything. We go into meetings, whatever it is about, he, his concern also is the Brack and Little Cayman. <coughs> so I know there's a domestic line that's being planned. So that person will be very pleased when this, when this airport is complete. Excellent, excellent. Ms. Barber? Um, I came through um, the airport last Sunday, um, and there was some issues with a backup um, and long lines, but and there was, um, we, we did correct that um, the next day, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I think, um, like, like Councillor White said, we will, we are going to, to have a separate line for domestic, but that will come in time when, mm -hmm. when the, the whole project is completed. So, um, I would like to appeal to the public to please bear with us, um, when you are actually trying to renovate an airport that's still operational, we are going to um, experience yes. some inconveniences, but I just want the public to know that at the end of the day, they will in fact be happy with the end result. So just please bear with us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think, I think uh, and I'm not sure how they remedied it, but one is just to have more people on the ground, reassuring people, um, assisting them, being having a physical presence on the ground despite the fact, because people are accustomed to long lines. You go into Charlotte, you go into um, uh, Atlanta, New York, anywhere, there are going to be lines that you're not going to eliminate that when you have six flights on the ground at one time in, in the Cayman Islands, there are going to be lines. But ensuring that they're moving along and that the people there to assist them, answer questions, reassure them, not a problem, we're, go we're going to get you through. Because we always say that people don't want to have to spend, especially those who are coming here as tourists for four or five days a week, you don't want to spend you know, several hours in the terminal. You want to get out there and get into the sunshine and everything as well. But uh, uh, I, like you, I'm extremely optimistic about the end results in terms of what, uh, you know, what we're going to see at Owen Roberts International Airport um, as well. Um, again, I want to hand the mic over to you because I know you have an agenda, you have things that you want to talk about, and I want to give you that, uh, both of you that opportunity. Thank you, O.C. Um, continuing on from um, 
the Education Plan of Action 2017-18. Um, another very crucial um, aspect is to continue to prepare our students for jobs of the future. And I know my government, David and I, our government, is passionate about the success of our students. And, and also, I know we have the opposition on board that also shares um, the sentiment. So um, we have to, our schools are, are helping to ensure that our students are prepared for further study and employment. Our educators have an immense task as they prepare our students, not only for current employment, but also for jobs of the future jobs may not, that may not even exist as yet. Mm -hmm. So it, it's quite a challenge, but you know, we, it's important that we do uh, prepare um, our students for those jobs and we have the right teachers, teachers that can teach our kids and continue to get professional development in order to keep up to speed with all of the changes in the education system as we go forward. I recently attended a um, education conference on visible learning. Mm -hmm. um, this was hosted by the Minister of Education, the Honorable Julianne O'Connor Connolly. This year, the seminar featured an introduction to visible learning and knowing an, an educator's mm -hmm. impact in the classroom. The guest speaker was a Miss Kristen Weston and she addressed the student, uh, sorry, the teachers on visible learning that reinforces the importance of a role that educators play in the lives of our children. Children are at school seven hours a day, and we need to be able to make use of the most effective methods that keep our students on a positive track. During her um, address, Ms. Weston used a metaphor that compared her personal struggle to run a 5K to that of an educator determined to engage his or her students. Even with the fancy, fancies of sneakers and an amazing running ensemble, the only equipment that is guaranteed to get you across that finish line is hard work, determination, and a belief that you can do it. So basically, it's, it's all about hard work determination and belief in our students and that's what it comes that's what success comes with now there, there have been and I'm, I'm not sure miss barbara whether or not you're involved in in this area but there have has been a lot of talk about the phys the physical infrastructure as far as education is concerned and the completion of um, some unfinished stru structures. Uh, do you have any uh, any information on that in terms of uh, wh what's moving forward? Yeah, well see, my view on that is if a child wants to learn, it doesn't have to be in a physical building. You know, it's, it's you can learn anywhere. Mm -hmm. You can learn under an almond tree, wherever. So it's, it's basically just encouraging and and the, the children to learn and providing them with the right tools so my view on that we have to have some fancy building i know that's important mm -hmm. but at the end of the day it's really focusing on other areas um to to teach our kids how to um be a success okay folks we're going to go to a commercial break now when we return we're going to be talking uh, more with uh, counselors and Emily's and counselors, Mr. David White and Miss Barbara Connolly. When we return, we're going to talk about sports and tourism with Mr. White as well. So please stay tuned. Don't change that dial. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me this morning. Emily's and counselors, uh, Miss Barbara Connolly and Mr. David White, uh, we want to talk a little bit more about sports and tourism with Mr. White. Okay, um, I've come into the Ministry for Sports and the Ministry for Tourism and Transport at an exciting time because tourism industry is growing because all the key indicators, uh, they, it's positive. 
and the tourism we have i mean sports we have exciting projects coming up this year that all the Cayman will be proud of so i'm here at an exciting time and i'm happy to be here the in sports we have the pan Amer pan american squash championship this summer we have the caribbean golf championship the amateur golf championship in july and august this year we have the usual flower swim in june then we have the Cayman Islands Marathon in December, the North Seca Volleyball Tournament in May, and then the big Carifta next year, Tournament which we yeah we mm -hmm. have to plan for that and look forward to that because that is something that all the Cayman could be proud of. But when tourism is growing, that is, I mean, that can only be good for taxi drivers, tour operators, and omnibus operators. So, I mean, it's exciting times for all Caymanians and I'm happy to be a part of it. The we've had we have right now 833 persons currently employed in public transportation and that is up from 536 in 2013. So it's growing and that's because of tourism coming to Cayman, you know, the tourism is increasing and it's all good for all Caymanians. So that's 833 in, in employed in uh, transport? In there? public transportation. Public transport, yeah. okay. And that's up from 536 in 2013. Okay. Uh, and anything on, uh, on the cruise terminal side of things? Uh, and any information that we have on that? Uh, that you're well, to be to? honest, OC, I haven't been, I haven't been a part of negotiations and planning from the beginning and I've only come into it since the elections and I know that you know with with um the outline business case going to cabinet and being approved that's the way forward and and I I mean I go along with what the the outline business case is and there's nothing more I can say than that mm -hmm. you know okay I agree with with the plans ahead okay and uh, do, do, uh, any idea in terms of when we're, we, we will actually see some physical work um, start starting? Well, to be honest, right now, nine parties have been pre-qualified, and that's, that's at the position we are now, so we're just waiting to hear that, you know? The, mm -hmm. And the ministry is reviewing, you know, the outlined solutions, but right now, we, th that's the position, that's, that's the stage we're at. Okay. What one of our listeners has written in and uh, said, um, um, good morning. It's not that a new building is needed. Um, it's that the existing ones are sometimes uh, are in uh, disrepair, you know, as well. And uh, any, any idea what's happening in that front, Ms. Barbara? Yeah, I agree um, with the um, caller. And um, I know there is funds in the budget to upgrade and to... Um, to repair some of the existing um, schools, so I know I can I can um, attest to the fact that there are some of our schools that that are in disarray, and um, I don't recall, but I think um, in the budget we are going to add the um, the reception class, and I think that's prospect in prospect, okay. and I think in Bodentown we're going to also be doing some work on, um, I think it's the canteen, perhaps. Uh, but I don't have that information <coughs> in front of me just okay. now. We won't, we won't hold yes. you to that. That's so. okay. We, we certainly understand that. Uh, one of our listeners has written in also, and this, um, I must say, uh, is more for uh, Councillor Harris because I think he's involved um, in, in the um, Home Affairs Ministry as well. But I'll read it anyway, and if, if you have comments, uh, if not, n not a problem at all. It says, I have a question for mm -hmm. the MLAs. Uh, uh, maybe uh, you or they can answer this for me, please. I'm very concerned what is going on at immigration with these work permits in regards uh, with work permits. We have some people getting permits for persons and collecting an additional fee from each person uh, weekly. Uh, those persons are paying them weekly. I guess they're paying them. They, they're getting the work permits. They're allowed to freelance. And then the employer who's named on the work permit gets 
um, a portion of their salary each week. Um, um, so they are paying for uh, for permits and insurance, and those uh, due to pay pensions are also paying for it. So they're basically paying everything that the employer should be paying. So many of these persons uh, that are applying for the work permits don't have work for those workers and are able to pull work permits. My question, how and why a con concerned citizen? Like I said, um, this is more the um, forte of um, the Ministry of Home, Home Affairs and um, not necessarily your, your ministry. But we did see that um, the uh, Premier did commit to 100% uh, employment uh, you know, for, for Caymanians mm -hmm. and some overhaul um, and review of the business staffing plans uh, system as well as the work permit system as well. I don't know if either one of you want to comment. Yes, yeah, so see, and I think that's a part of the whole um, redevelopment of um, the immigration services to reflect the um, HR authority, and that will be a part of um, the enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, for enforcing, and I understand the caller in terms of um, people out there um, setting up their businesses um, applying for work permits and employing people, and some of those people really don't even have jobs. I, I hear that all the time. So that is a part of what we have to to really um, monitor, uh, monitor and to correct is all of those that are abusing the system and using it, like I say, um, as businesses. And it's unfair to the employee because a lot of the times the employee does not have a job. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't have anything, and, and they're just sitting there waiting to get a job, and we don't need um, that type of um, um, situation out there where you see people just hanging out and not working. Everybody that's here that's able and willing to work should be working. They should not be, because that's where the crime um, will come into play. And, so, and uh, sorry, sorry. So I agree. I agree with the caller that that has to be um, corrected and hopefully with the new HR authority that will alleviate that issue. Okay, and we need to appeal to our own Caymanians as well because you, you have to be Caymanian in order to possess a trade and business license unless you have a local company's control license. Um, you have to be a Caymanian. So obviously those persons who are applying for these work permits are Caymanians, right? they have to realize that they're also hurting the possibilities of Caymanians getting jobs if they're applying for work permits of convenience for other persons, uh, you know, to be here. You know, if I'm, if I'm a, a, a national of another country and I don't possess Caymanian status, I can't apply for a work permit for someone. So we have to look towards our own Caymanians and say, you want to stop doing this because you're, you're, you're uh, First of all, you're creating a false economy to a certain extent. You're sowing the seeds of potential criminal activity because if these people can't find work, then they're going to find other ways of uh, getting money mm -hmm. and everything else. So we need to, um, you know, to appeal to our own people. Now, many people say, oh, we liked it when OC was at immigration. He kept everything in check. But those days are gone. Um, you know, we don't want to seem to be um, operating under a system where you have to go out there and you have to check everyone. There, there, there can be more forensic activity going on in the immigration department. And I know that they, that they work more based on intelligence, uh, information that they re receive you know, from people to address issues like marriages of convenience and these type of work permits of convenience and stuff like that as well, rather than having to go and knock on people's doors, people's office doors and say, you know, we're here to check because that certainly is not the kind of environment that you want, uh, you know, to be operating and you want businesses to feel comfortable at the same time you want to ensure that they're um, um, abiding by the laws that are in place as well. And we'll see. To be honest, you're saying it's sowing seeds for criminal activity. I would even go further and say that who's doing that is actually committing a crime. Yes. And yes. it's not only committing a crime, it's wicked. And I know that we have a premier who, who <coughs> will make sure, and he has the, the right 
chief officer in Wesley Howell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He has the right counselor in Austin Harris, and they will make sure and do what they have to do to cut this out because, as I say, the people are committing a crime themselves. And he has a, um, a ded dedicated group of persons in the Immigration Department as well. There are many uh, persons, uh, when I left immigration, who are still there now who are Correct. certainly dedicated to the job and know you know, how to do their, uh, their jobs as well. I know you want to talk about things that are happening in your constituency as well. We have about three minutes before we go to our um, 9 o'clock headline news, and then we'll have about another 25 minutes after that to talk about. So again, I want to give you both of you an opportunity to t discuss the things that are important to you and the things issues that you're involved in as well. Start with you, Ms. Barr. Okay, Jose, you know that community work is not new to me. I've always done community yes, work. I've yes. had my senior citizen parties. I take care of my um, my people, even when I was not a politician, because when I worked, like I say, with uh, earlier with, um, with Mr. Tibbetts, mm -hmm. I did mm -hmm. all his constituency work. So this is all not, this is all, um, it's not foreign to me. So early in the day, um, because I'm responsible, Windsor Park is a part of my area as well as um, areas like East Boulevard and Apollo Link. Um, I got a call from one of the residents there who said, we want to do a month long cleanup of the streets and the yards and stuff. So I said, okay, I, I'm here to support you all. So I worked along with them and with them. Um, the NRA to get the trucks in there to help them do community work. Um, not only did we clean, um, we, we cleaned senior, senior citizens, those that weren't able to out, actually go out there and help themselves and clean their yards, we, we also helped them. And to be quite honest, we need to, to have pride in our our islands, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, in particular our neighborhoods, our yards, and even our neighbors' yards. So this is this is something I want to introduce and to continue in Georgetown South. To let let's all go in or or just go into your your yards, your neighbors' yards, down the street, and just ensure that there's no garbage around. And if there is, let's do cleanups. Let's all uh, be a part of that process. Um, I, I'm also um, involved with the beach cleanups. And um, the latter part of last year, I also went into um, the Northside Beach with um, the late um, Edna Moll and her family. They sponsored um, a day, a cleanup day, uh, a beach cleanup day. And I also assisted with that. And this past Saturday, um, Plastic Free Cayman, that's Sorry. a non-profit um, organization, and they actually car uh, carried out a cleanup um, day mm -hmm. in or morning in um, the Safe Haven um, area. And OC, I was amazed at the amount of garbage that's either, it's not generated, maybe a little bit of it is generated locally or internally, mm -hmm. but it's also externally coming in from the, the currents boats. Bring it uh, in, yeah, yes. the currents uh -huh. bring it in. And um, we collected tons and tons of garbage. And what heartened me more than anything else was the fact that there were so many kids out there that were participating in this effort. And we have to, that's where it starts. That's where it starts. And we have to get um, people like or this organization or others into the schools educating our kids on how to to really um, make this island, our three islands, a litter-free um, environment. Because right now, it's the garbage is just totally out of control. Okay. We have one caller. We're going to ask that caller to be patient. Hold on. We're going to our headline news, which is very short. When we return, we're going to take your call. So don't hang the phone up. Stay on the line for us, please. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. In the studio with me this morning, we have MLA and Counselor, Ms. Barbara Connolly. She's with the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports, 
agriculture and lands, and her special focus is on education and youth. We also have with us MLA and Councillor Mr. David White. Uh, he represents Georgetown West in our Legislative Assembly. Uh, he's with the Ministry of District Administration, Tourism and Transport, and his focus is on sports and tourism. Before we went to the commercial break, Ms. Barbara was telling you about some of the uh, things that are going on in her constituency, and we're going to ask Mr. David White now to share with us some of the issues uh, that are going on. And I would imagine that sometimes uh, some of these issues cross boundaries as well, because while for electoral purposes we may have physical boundaries, um, you know, when, when it comes to issues, when it comes to um, solving issues, they're not restricted by boundaries in, 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 in any regard. Yeah, and I'll just jump in here, Osi. I know it's um, Councillor White's turn, but um, basically, um, Councillor White and I share constituency offices mm -hmm. because, like mm -hmm. you say, our boundaries... Um, we share boundaries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So even when we were campaigning and stuff, we held a lot of meetings jointly. And um, a lot of our community meetings, we, we actually do as a team, Georgetown South and Georgetown West. So I agree with you. And most of the issues that his constituents are experiencing, my constituents are um, as well. So it, it's good that we have and I like the idea of the whole 19 member or the single member constituencies because it does make it easier for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, when we had the old um, e electoral um, law, it was, we had to be responsible or uh, back in the day, the MLAs had to be responsible for eight oh, or 9,000 yeah. people. Yeah. And it's just no way possible that they were able to communicate and keep in touch with their people. So this has made our lives a lot easier when I have 1,204 constituents in Georgetown South is much more manageable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, so we have our office um, in the Sigma building and we get calls. We, we have our constituents come in to meet with us um, and we try our endeavor best to satisfy our constituents on whatever needs they have. Um, you know, we do... Um, when they call about a pothole or a drain or um, needing a speeding bump or something, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. those are things that we go out then into the areas just to do an inspection of that or they send us the, the photos and then we then um, act and have that, um, that work done. So um, it's, it's been a really good experience that we are able to share most um, mm -hmm, things mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. terms of uh, our constituency um, issues. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, <coughs> um, when we had that, that the soul tank scenario yes. um, last summer, um, Councillor White and I held a community meeting and um, it was, you know, it's about keeping our people apprised of what's going on. Um, and I want to be able to get to a position where I have a database that I can create, and my office is working on that just now, that when something like that, that was an emergency, and, you know, we people just weren't advised of it in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able, uh, once I can get all the email addresses of all of my constituents, to be able to just click on an email and say, this is happening, or even on a WhatsApp message to say, um, you know, you have to, sorry, you have to um, evacuate or whatever the circumstance may be. Um, it makes it a lot easier and uh, more efficient to be able to communicate, communicate with, with our them. people. Okay. We have a caller who has uh, rejoined us. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning to your panel. Good morning. Good morning, Hi, Jen. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I, I want to um, hit on David a little bit. David, you said we got um, over 800 people in the public transport right now, taxes and, and public buses. You said 800 and change 833 of people? 833 persons. Eight, eight, 833? Uh, 
Yeah, employed in public transportation. That is everything. That covers the whole like remit of the Um I know this is not your stupid question, but I'll still post ask you about it. You can sure. make a note. I just like to know how many percentage of that is born Caymanian. You can do have to answer me now. You can make a little note. David, we got taxes. We got the vehicles out here on the road saying taxi and has a yellow license plate on it. I cannot get the logic of that. I would like to look into that, please. I just on Facebook last night where we got a new system coming out here called Flex. I don't know how it really works, and they're inviting taxi drivers to come and join them. I'm not here to criticize nobody. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just like to know how, yeah. that, how that's going to run, inviting public, I mean, inviting taxis to come and join them. David, um, I would, you know, I like to see done in in, in this taxi business. I would like to see public transport improve their service. When you call there, you can't get anyone to answer the phone. They got a, a, a voice on there that's not even employed anymore. When you when they say to press a certain button to get connected to so and so and so. I called the glass house to get hold of tourism. No one answered me. I went to the glass house and called from the extension, and no one answered me. David, we are in tourism, and you say that you, you, tourism, part of tourism comes under your portfolio. That is good. But I would beg of you to please help our taxi drivers that has to go up to Royal Pier and stand up to try to get a customer. And when you go up to the spot stop to get a customer, we all need to come under one umbrella. It is very unprofessional. So I'm here fighting for all our taxes who cannot come in to the compound to do a proper customer service to our visitors to our island. It is dire need here in the Cayman Islands. We got guys hanging at the fence. We got them at Royal North and in South whenever it happens. It needs to be a bit more organized because it's really out of control. And I would just like to say, we got 800 and change overall here in taxi businesses and so forth. We got so many other key miners out there who want to get into taxi business. And when they go to the public transport, all they can hear, it is closed off. We're not taking no more for this year. They go back next year, they get the same run around. We as taxi drivers out there, trying to do our best when it comes to giving good customer service. But when you got some that come out and undermine you and make you look like an idiot that you don't know what you're doing, it hurts to the core because we got a lot of professional taxi drivers out there needs to get in to the the pride book. We need to get a city to get a seminar going again. We need to teach these people that we just can't come out there to make a dollar. It's all about the Cayman Islands and about customer service and, and, and trying to dress properly and present yourself in a decent manner. When it comes to customer service, because then we got to run it away. I'm, I'm going to let you all go. But David, the North Terminal needs to be looked into daily. The sports stock needs to look into daily because then for tourism, we should have the proper buildings and ground for these visitors to walk on. We talk about building a pair, but yet what we got, we can't bring it up to standard. I don't see how that can work. But anyhow, I'll leave you at that. Thank you so much for your time. Bye. Thank you, Jan. And I understand what you're saying, and I feel what you're saying. And you and I talk all the time, and I will have taken a note of what you your concerns, and I will definitely, definitely address that when I see you. But, Jan, I mean, anybody who applies to get a taxi license, it, you have to be Caymanian. And if, it's, if they have status... They are Caymanians, and you have to... No distinction between yeah, the two. Yeah, so I will find out the first question you asked, born Caymanians, but all taxi drivers, I'm going to tell you right now, are Caymanians. But I will, I will find out your concerns, and I will get back to you when I see you. But OC, okay. um, sure. going on, um, Barbara touched most of the concerns because we are both, you know, as you say... Windsor Park and we cross borders but flooding is a major concern in Georgetown West the roads 
are a major concern and we get a lot of complaints and calls from the Windsor Park Oak Mill Drive area. We had calls from a little road off of um, Goring Avenue. I mean, straight away we've dealt with it and we've sorted it out. I mean, there's still concerns on Oak Mill Drive, which we, I mean, it has to be addressed and fixed. We're we're concerned and we're trying to fix Neighborhood Watch in the in the Windsor Park area, which is a vital part of the neighborhood. But then also Councillor Connell, Connelly and I, we are involved in an after-school program in Windsor Park, and we help with financing that, and and that is something that we we look forward to every month that we're doing it. You know, I mean, it's a program along Windsor Park there, the church after-school program, and mm -hmm. we go and we've we've attended it, and we're we're happy to be involved in that. Okay. Um, Excellent. And Councillor, why can I just interject here to add to what um, Councillor White has said with regard to the after-school program? I'm looking. We're looking to expand that. Well, it can't be in the same facility as that because they they can't they can't accommodate any more kids. But that's one of our another community project that we're working towards is identifying some building, some facility that can accommodate an after school, uh, after school program. In addition to that, I'll also like to, to have, the, the building needs to be large enough that we can bring our senior citizens in, some of our senior citizens in to do like um, craft and even um, teach them the basics in computer because some of them are very good with, with their phones and mm -hmm, stuff. So mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. want to give them that opportunity. In addition to that, I would also like to be able to um, provide in that same facility um, somewhere for our youth to come and if they need to prepare a resume, some of them may not have computers at home or surf the net or whatever they need to do, give them that opportunity and also try to develop some youth programs because I'm hearing all the time from my constituents um, that there's not enough um, to do, enough out there for our youth to do. So I want to really get involved and uh, as uh, as youth is one of my um, on one of my um, subjects, I would like to really um, be more involved in in the youth of of, of Cayman. Um, okay, we're going to go to a commercial break, and when we return, we're going to be on our last fifteen minutes of the show this morning. I think we have a few calls as well, Miss Susan. One one call as well. So, folks, please stay tuned. We're going to take our last commercial break before the end of the show. morning and welcome back to For the Record. I just want to read uh, one uh, note that came from one of our listeners and uh, uh, he, that caller has asked for clarification, has corrected me on something and I'll, I'll clarify what I actually meant. I didn't say what I meant and I should have. It says, not sure I understand that work permit holders cannot apply for work permits. As far as, I, as, far as I am aware, persons on work permits apply all the time for domestics, personal assistants, gardeners, house, housekeepers, healthcare helpers, etc. It does not seem to be the case of having a trade and business license and being Caymanian. Please correct if correct if I misinterpret. Unless foreign nationals are on a visitor's permission, in which case they should not be seeking work or activity working or they should have a work permit for a particular job with the name, person, or, or business. They should not be hanging around looking and begging for work in the islands. And the, the, the writer um, is actually correct um, by stating that you could be here on a work permit um, or on a contract, on a contractual basis, and apply for a work permit for someone as well as a domestic helper or as a gardener, whatever. I know that uh, members of the uh, work permit board in my day was quite apprehensive about granting work permits for uh, people who are on work permits themselves. We, we felt that that's an additional burden on the Cayman Islands. You bring someone here to do a work for you, and then you have to bring someone else to work uh, you know, for them. So in mo many instances, the board would refer them and say, use local services. Uh, for instance, for in gardening, 
you have gardening services, so why should you have to have a personal um, gardener for domestic help, depending on what it is. If it's for childcare, that may be completely different from having someone coming in uh, and cleaning your apartment, cleaning your office or whatever, because you can use local services then uh, as well. But if you have a trade and business license, you have to be a Caymanian to, um, to have a trade and business license. Like I said, unless you have a local company's um, you know, control license, then that's a, a, a different story. So the writer is actually correct in, in, in that regard. But I must say that the board have been in the past very apprehensive about granting a work permit for someone to employ someone who's already on a work permit themselves, that person who's already on a work permit and getting a work permit to employ someone else because it's almost like the double whammy, you know, two for one, you know, <laughs> that you get as well. I think we have one caller. Let's go to the phone lines. Caller, good morning. Uh, welcome to For the Record. I believe, Ms. Susan, we're going to make this the last call because the uh, both counselors have some additional things that they want to wrap up with as well. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, O.C. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, not bad, and Miss Conley and Mr. White. <clears throat> good morning, Peter. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Thanks. Um, everybody's entitled to their opinions, right? <clears throat> and I know as soon as you get on the radio and um, complain about something, there's a few other people that you know will how this to say about your opinions and this and that. But you know, it makes a difference to me. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Um, my, my issue this morning is, um, gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, is where this island is going. As a Caymanian, I do not like the direction it's going. <clears throat> and the reason I don't, I'm going to stop driving through Georgetown because I have no issues in this country with any nationality. You know, Caymanians are mostly international people. We've been all over the world. We made friends with every nation in the world, and we was always recognized as the nicest people in the world. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to change that at this point in time in my life, but I am very concerned with what is happening. <clears throat> I drive through Georgetown, <clears throat> and the people, no disrespect, that I see that is representing us in this country in the tourist business, that is not a good sign. What other countries in this world do you go to that you can say, well, oh, we just came from the United States and um, we come to the Cayman Islands and we, we got America representing us. This is the Cayman Islands. What is wrong with our own people in this country representing us as Caymanians? I have a serious issue with that. So, and I, I, ha I have a number of other issues, but I'll leave that to another time. So if you all want to comment on that, but that is my take for this morning, and thank you all very much for listening to me. Thank you very much, uh, caller, for that. Throw it out. <clears throat> um, thank you, Peter. Um, I think we all have to acknowledge that many of those people out there that are working in the tourism sector are Caymanians. Um, we, and I admit that it would be nice to have our own faces, our own indigenous Caymanians out there um, to represent us. But I don't know why our people are not applying for these jobs. And if they are, uh, why they're not getting those jobs. But um, like I say, they, you know, we have to encourage our people to, um, to further their education, to get up to speed, and to be, to familiarize themselves with what's what, what's the latest um, topical issues so that they can relate to the tourists. But I do agree with you that I would like to see more of our own local indigenous Caymanians out there. But like I said, some of them are our own people. I mean, they have status. They have, um, you know, they're married to Caymanians. So we have to um, admit that they're, one, they're a part of us. There, so uh, unless um, Councillor White has something th something to add to that, then um, I'll pass that on to him. Well, I'd just like to tell Peter that, well, I see him every morning in the gas station, so I'll speak to him tomorrow again. But Peter, I I I know 
straight up that you're not anti any nationality. You are pro 200% Caymanian, and that's where you stand, and that's how I stand. And I mean, I agree with you. And as Barbara, as Councillor Connolly says, right now we can't we can't have somebody. The law states it has to be Caymanian, and if you have status, you are Caymanian, and and that's how we have to go about it. Miss Barbara, I, th I think there are a few things that you wanted to touch on uh, as well. So uh, we've t uh, closed off the phone lines now, give you an opportunity. Okay, to. OC, thank you. Um, just continuing on our um, community projects, I just wanted to let my constituents in Georgetown South know that um, I'm working on getting the electricity reinstalled um, in the park in Windsor Park. I'm also working on some the parking issue at Smith Cove. I have plans um, to develop the land acquired by government um, at, um, adjoining Smith Cole. Mm -hmm. And you were, um, you were involved in that in the, in the initial uh, that's correct. Uh, acqu acquisition of that Absolutely. property as well. Yes, so I want to sort of um, develop that into like a park um, similar to a small version of the public beach with some ca uh, cabanas and playground facilities and stuff for um, our kids. And um, let me see what else. And also restroom, restroom facilities. Mm -hmm. When I'm not on the public road, I'm actually walking um, at John Gray Track. And a lot of people now are actually using that track. And there's no restroom facilities there. And I spoke to the principal the other day on that. And he was suggesting where I could perhaps put a restroom um, in that in that playground, mm -hmm. so I'm going to work on that. I need a restroom in the park in Windsor Park because we have to rent a generator each time we have a function there. And um, let me see. And also, there will be a restroom in the new development of the um, when I create the park or develop the park um, in Smith Cove. Okay. Um, okay. With regard to the community policing and the neighborhood watch. I'm also working on signage, and we're going to also do some community meetings um, to educate our people on on the community uh, on the neighborhood watch um, program and how to address that and and deal with that. One more thing, Osi. Yes. Um, if I if sure, you allow sure, me the sure, time, go right ahead. Um, I'm the chairperson of the organizing committee of the youth parliament, and I know that youth parliament is held on. Um, Commonwealth Day, mm -hmm. which is actually this year, Monday, March the 12th. And um, we, David and I sit on that. Well, like I said, I'm the chairperson of that. And David is also a member along with um, a couple of the other MLAs, um, MLA Kenneth Bryan and MLA, well, actually, Deputy um, Speaker, Mr. Bush, Bernie Bush. Bernie Bush, yes. And um, the, the students now are um, preparing for the debate. And every Tuesday, um, they have their training sessions. And it's really been such a great experience for us because we go there most Tuesdays and spend that hour and a half with them. And not only do they learn, but we also learn <laughs> as, as new um, MLAs. MLAs. Yeah. So I just wanted to throw that out that um, we like to have, um, you know, everyone that could possibly attend that um, youth parliament and particularly the those parliament those students that would like to one day become um, um, parliamentarians and um, let me see and I also wanted to all mention um, the education council which is chaired by um, Dan Scott mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm also a member of that and we're doing some really good things there um, we've set up set up some subcommittees um, to deal with scholarships to deal with the dress code and discipline um, in the, our schools, our public schools. So we will be coming on to, to deal, to actually um, advise the public more on the whole education council and what we hope to achieve there mm -hmm. um, in the not to, um, uh, and in the future. And that, that's more of a policy-making body that's, than that's anything correct. else, right? That's correct, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Okay. Mr. White? 
Yeah, so see, I I just wanted, I also was going to mention on the youth parliament, and I would like to say thank you to the Madam Clerk for having us on this, on the youth parliament. And as Barbara says, definitely we learn when we go there. Every Tuesday we go, and we really, truly learn from these young parliamentarians. But they, I mean, other than that, I don't think there's much more for me to say because we're winding up. But I would just like to thank a few people. Sure, go right ahead. And first of all, I would like to thank the Honorable Mose Kirkconnell and the Honorable Juliana Connolly for having me in their ministry. And I mean, they don't realize that just a few little words that they always offer, that helps, that goes a long way to helping me. Mm -hmm. And I'm always getting that advice and I appreciate that very much. But I would like to mention a few people in the ministries that are extremely helpful and make it so much easier for me in the tourism ministry i have strand Borden, who is this chief officer i have ventisha connelly i have gina matthews i have sue ransom and they make life in the ministry for tourism extremely easy and enjoyable and in the sports ministry on the Honorable, Honorable Juliana Connolly, I have Miriam Foster and Joel Francis, who all I do is turn up. They do everything, and they make it easy, enjoyable, and I really am having fun in under the two ministries, and I appreciate the two ministers for allowing me to be a part of the ministry. And thank you, O.C., for having us here today. Uh, thank you for being here as well. Any, any, Anything else, Ms. Barb? Uh I think um, Councillor White said it all in terms of the thank yous, but I'm not going to call any names, but I just wanted to say a thank you to my team, my minister in the Minister of Education, my chief officer, as well as the t his team. And um, it's, 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 they are my support as well, and I, I'm really honored to be a part of that ministry. In addition, I would like to say that... Um, and I know we get complaints about MLAs that don't re respond to emails or don't respond to telephone calls, don't return um, telephone calls. Um, I want to apologize if there's anyone in my constituency or anyone that has been calling me and I haven't been able to return their call. But I want to just advise them that I do have an office and shared by um, Councillor White. And my office number is 745 zero four eight seven and the cell that my personal assistant carries her name is Vicky Ferrero she's Caymanian <laughs> um, it's nine one six 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 seven eight and your office hours are our office hours are from 10 until five six o'clock on our constituency day and when I first started when I first started out my constituency day was on a Wednesday but I find that it's just too many meetings um, PAC meetings, everything seems to be held on a Wednesday. So I'm actually going to change that constituency day that I'm actually in that clinic, holding a clinic all day to a Tuesday. Unless, of course, I have to act for a minister and have to attend um, cabinet. Yeah. So, um, yes, so, and David would like me to also mention that Denise Miller is his uh, PA in his um, consti in our, um, constituency um, office. And she can be contacted on his behalf. So fee feel, please feel free, the public, whoever you are, to call that office, set up appointments. I'm more than happy to see you, um, any, any and everybody. It doesn't have to be Georgetown South constituents because I'm here to represent all three islands. Thank you, O.C., for this opportunity. And you enjoy the rest of your birthday. <laughs> Thank today. you. Thank you. I want to thank both of you for uh, being here this morning, making yourselves available as well. And we, we did talk off the air about the fact that, uh, you know, being uh, in a councillor position, we have seen in the past, councillors have actually become ministers. Uh, you have your feet on the ground already. You get the experience there. So if you do decide to continue in your political career, then you have that sort of ground and where you have the exposures to the ministries and everything else. And this is just my note in that regard. I know that the whole issue of counselors, when it was first established, it was established 
under by interpretation of the Constitution under another administration, and then uh, the PPM administration uh, developed the same process as well. Uh, hopefully one of these days we will have full clarity in our Constitution that actually lays out the role of a counselor because I think that's the probably the neatest way to put it. But it is certainly, um, you know, good job, good work experience for any budding politician who's looking to move forward. But not only just to use it as a platform to um, to advance your, your political career, but also puts you in a position where you, you actually have the opportunity to get things done, to do things for uh, your constituencies as well. Yep. Thank you, O.C. Thank you very much for thank that. You, folks, folks, I want to thank you for allowing Radio Cayman and by extension for the record into your homes, into your vehicles as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands into your places of work, whether it be an office cubicle or if you're working in the outdoors. I also want to remind you that we are our brothers and our sisters keepers. There is always someone out there who is less fortunate than we are, and I ask you to extend a helping hand to them. If you can't do that, then I suggest you donate to a worthy charity because we always want to consider those who need, not necessarily those who want or even those who crave. I say to you, have a great day. Continue to support your radio station, Radio Cayman. Join Sterling Rainey Banks at 12 noon for talk today. Join me on Wednesday when Mr. Kenneth Bryan, MLA, Mr. Kenneth Bryan, uh, will be my guest guest as well. I say to you, have a great day. And as usual, we ask the good Lord to bless these three beautiful, wonderful Cayman Islands. Informative, impartial, insightful. This is your talk show. 1-800-534-8255. Your calls, your input. This is For the Record.